Hello, you're listening to the broadcast from the New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We're located on Highway 411, just three buildings from the intersection of Highways 411 and 95. Our email address is simply our initials, followed by the word mailbox at gmail.com, which is nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. We meet Sundays for teaching at 10 a.m., followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Brother Marcus Severance is a pastor. Now, let's listen in to the message. The Lord, another big hand clap of praise tonight. Amen. He's worthy. Hallelujah. We praise God tonight. Amen. For the opportunity to get to be here tonight. Amen. I'll get this wire stuffed in all of my pocket right here and leave some of it hanging out so I don't get tripped up or nothing. But amen. What a joy it is to be in the house of God again tonight. Amen. What a joy and a privilege and honor to get to come and be in his house. Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Amen. Hallelujah, God. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord. God, for your goodness and your mercy, God, tonight, Father. God, thank you for bringing us out here today, God. And God, we pray, God, today that, God, that you would speak to our hearts tonight, God, and that, Father, your word, God, would find a lodging place, God, tonight in your people's heart, Father. We pray, God, that you use me, anoint me, God. Uh, God, hide me behind the cross tonight, God. And, Father, that you may be glorified, Father, and that, God, that your word, God, that would become to fruition, God, to, in our lives, Father, become a rhema word, God, alive, and Father, we give you the praise and the glory for it all. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Now, you may be seated. I'm not going to keep you all night tonight. I know that, that, uh, that we're, we're few in number. But man, I'm going to tell you right now that whenever you begin to praise and worship God, you know, if you don't learn anything, uh, learn that whenever we begin to praise and worship God, that he inhabits our praises. Amen. He inhabits them, Gillis. Man, I knew that I knew that when Ivy got out of the vehicle, she said ghost. And I said, the Holy Ghost in there. And she said, yeah, he's in there. I knew God that he was waiting on us, Gillis, before we ever got here. He was already here. I mean, he even said in his word that before he formed us in our in the mother's womb that he knew us, amen. He knew we were gonna be here tonight, Brother Danny. He knew uh, what was going on, Um Way before we ever knew, uh, Ivy knew what was going on. No, she knows that. She's not even two years old and knows the Holy Ghost is going to meet us here. Amen. I praise God tonight uh, to know that God is always uh, going to be there for us. Amen. And the songs that we sing tonight, and, you know, and a lot of times when you're the preacher, you don't really know uh, what God's got going on. It's scripture that I've never uh, preached out of before. It's scripture that I, I, I've really just uh, read the last few days and just begin uh, to, to search and, to, and to, to study it out and, and what God is speaking to me tonight about for the church is, is trusting in Him. Uh, I know that we've had a lot of churches, a lot of services that uh, where we talk about trusting God but do and, and about being fully persuaded and about truly trusting God with our whole heart, uh, but that's important to God. Uh, because we shouldn't worry for anything, Gillis. Even in my life, you know, I shouldn't worry for anything because I know uh, who's the keeper of my soul. I know who has the power over my life. I know who is in control, amen? So uh, God is still continuing to tell us because I know that it's gonna get darker, Brother Gillis, before it gets lighter, amen? I know that the dark days are coming and I know that we're gonna have to stand on God's word and just like Gillis said this morning, it may come to a point where it costs us our life to worship and praise him. I know that uh, this is the month that the law took into effect in Russia uh, that they can't worship anywhere but where uh, the government says inside the church on that one given day they can't worship God anywhere else, Brother Gillis. They can't worship him in their house. They can't worship him uh, in the laundromat. They can't worship him in their own vehicle. It's against the law. And so I know that those days are coming uh, for the United States because all you have to do is look around, Gillis. That's uh, talking about cutting the, the cross off the steeple, uh, talking about taking the scripture off the wall, and talking about things that they've done in the past. And it's continuing and it will continue because God has a plan. But trust in his plan. Amen. Don't be persuaded by anything else. Don't get hindered by anything else. Allow God to speak to you. Allow God to follow. Don't get cold feet and get to dancing and say, well, I know that it's getting too hot in here and it's getting too hard. Uh, well, I've got to go. He said that he'd never leave us. He'd never forsake us. He would go with us even until the end. He's not going to stop short. He's not going to stop short. You can trust him, Hunter. You can trust him with everything you've got. You're just a young man, but you can trust God with everything. I'm an older guy. 
not an old man like Harold, but I'm an older guy. I've got kids. I, I've got worries. I've got thoughts. Uh, but just like I tell Christian all the time, Christian, there's only so much we can do. Uh, we have to let them go. We have to uh, release them to prayer. We have to pray that God would hedge it in their way and that God would keep them. There's only so much as parents that we can do. God, give us, give them to us to, to raise and to, to teach the right and wrong and, and to show them the way that they should go. Bring them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord after that. All we can do is pray. And the Bible says if you bring them up, they'll not, they'll not depart from it, Gillis. And I'm living proof. I ran for a long time from God. But he will catch you. <laughs> you can't get away, Gillis. If you got praying men and women of God, praying mamas and daddies, you won't get away from him. The Holy Ghost will find you. And it may be dark in, uh, in some of their lives, but trust God. Brother Gillis, trust, trust God for Lance's life. I know that, that God is going to get him. Amen. He can't run forever. I know his daddy. And, and, and God is faithful. And God, and God will do what he said he would do. He said he would. He said he'd save our gospel. He's not going to get away no matter what the devil says. Well, well look, what, look at this going on. Look what that's going on. That's all right. It may be going on for right now, but they're going to get to the bottom and they're going to turn to Jesus and he's going to be standing there with open arms and he'll do more for them than I ever could anyway. Trust God. Trust him. Be faithful. Don't just trust him when it's convenient for you. Trust him always. In everything. I take my scripture from Jeremiah 17 tonight. 17 and verse 1. I'll begin there. I'll give you a few minutes to turn there. But I'm sorry. I'm not going to start in verse 1. I'm going to start out in 17 and 7. 1, 7, 7. And how convenient that this is the last Sunday of 7, 17. So. And it said, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord Amen. and whose hope the Lord is. Amen. Who's your hope tonight? The Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I, my hope is not in the government to change what's going on. I hope they do, but I'm not going to base my life on it. I'm going to base my life on what the Word says. I'm going to base my life on God says in my relationship with him that's what I'm going to base my life my hope that is in him and him alone blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord whose hope the Lord is for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when heat cometh <laughs> But her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. And Brother Gillis said, when all the bad things are coming around, I, I talked to a guy the other day and we were talking about uh, his, his, he had some grandparents or whatever and my granny back there, you know, she is born, and we're talking about the Great Depression and all that. And he said, my, my grandparents never knew anything was going on in the Great Depression. They didn't have anything anyway. Well, I, I know that the economy tanked in 2008, 2009, but how many in here was affected by that? Brother Danny, Sister Kathy, a few of us are affected by that. Michael, you were affected by that? Amen. There was a few of us that were affected. But the effects of that, Danny, did it harm you still today? No. Didn't persuade us any other way, even if we were affected by it, it still doesn't persuade us any other way. Because why? Because we're rooted and grounded in something that's not of this earth, of not of this world, that doesn't pertain of this, of this uh, galaxy or what, uh, whatever. This doesn't con contain. It, we're, we're not uh, hooked to this world. We're not hooked to this, this place. Because this is not our home. We are just passing through. And I'll tell you a story. I, I planted a tree years ago. Well, it's not been that many years ago. I guess it's probably been seven years ago, eight years ago. 
where I planted this tree, it always stayed wet, Brother Gillis. It always stayed marshy. and It would take me, it'd be middle of the summer before I could ever mow that area. And, it, and two times a year, I'd have to go down there and take my weed eater and I would have to weed eat that spot. Man, it was tough two times a year before I could finally mow it. And now I got my cut and I let him go down there and weed eat it. But I planted that tree down there because I knew that the type of tree that I planted, I planted a weeping willow. And I knew that tree would absorb some of that water. And that tree has grown probably faster than anything else that's grown in my yard because I've planted a couple other trees at the same time, actually two other trees, and it's way bigger than the other two trees. Well, maybe not way bigger than the one tree, but it's way bigger than the other tree, and it's a little bit bigger than the other tree. But the water that it absorbs and, and it takes that water, just like us when we come to the house of God, amen, and our roots are planted and we get watered, Brother Gillis, we, we come to the house of God, we, we look for a, a church that has that water that Jesus talked about, that living water, amen, flowing, amen. And our roots take root and ground it and this tree has is, is grown and grown and grown to where now, Brother Danny, I only have to weed eat that place one time a year because it sucks up so much water that it's even changed the, 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 the environment down there in that area. It's changed the aspect. Do you, do you get where I'm going with it? If we're planted where the water's at, amen, uh, not only will we grow faster, but we'll also change the environment. We'll, we'll begin to change everything around us where we're at. We don't want a bunch of garbage going on. I don't know about you, but I don't do well with junk going on. I don't do well with drama going on. I don't do well with people saying this or saying that. I don't, I don't want those things in my life. I've got other things, heavenly things, kingdom-minded things, amen, that I have to be worried about. So I'm going to be rooted and grounded in those things. If we get rooted and grounded in those things, those things will deter our life and they'll stun our growth. That's what's happened to that one tree where I planted it, the dog. He likes to go pee on that tree. And that tree, when I bought it, Gillis, it said it's supposed to be 20 to 15 feet tall. I can still see over it because the wrong thing's been watering it. There's a lot of Christians, that's what's happened in their life. They, they've been watered by the wrong thing. The, the wrong well. Amen. Bunch of junk, bunch of garbage. That's why they have a problem coming and staying in the house of God. They're, 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 they're thirsting after the wrong things. We need to thirst after the things of God, thirst after the things that God is involved with, thirst after those things, heavenly things, thirst after the water that Jesus said, I'll give you. He said that water that if you drink it, he said you'll never thirst again. That way when the drought comes, Brother Danny, we don't have to worry about there's a drought. Where's the drought at? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm still drinking water that's cool and, 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 and we're, I'm drinking from a well that I didn't even dig. Hey man, I didn't have nothing to do with. It was free given to me when that time comes. But we have to trust in the Lord. We have to trust in God in every aspect of our life, not just for the little things. I, I know that Christian, she's, you know, we're, we're, we, something's come up out of the blue in her life and it, we're both praying that whatever God wants her to do, she's got a good job where she works at. She likes it. She likes the people. She does all that. Well, there's an opportunity for more things and she can do other things with her in her life and in her career. And, but is that the way that God wants us to go? That, that's where the trust part comes in. Yeah, she can probably walk in there and blow them out of the water with an interview and come in there and just uh, tell them exactly what they want to hear. And, and, but it is, are we truly trusting God or is that just within ourselves? Well, God, I don't need to trust you with this. I've got it. And it's not God's will for our life. And then all of a sudden we find ourselves maybe not completely separated, but we've been knocked back a few steps to where if we would have listened to God, we would have been a little bit further ahead. And that's what happens to people. They get to a certain point. I've been there in my life. I've done the same thing, Brother Danny. I get too much confidence in, in, in me saying, well, I've got this. I don't need anybody's help. I, I can take care of this. And end up getting my teeth kicked in normally. I end up doing way more damage than I do good when I don't fully trust God with everything in my life. When, when we think that things are insignificant and think, well, God really doesn't care about that. that, that just, I can make that decision. 
Mike and Ivy belong to me. 